placement, position. If I hit a shot that allows me to keep coming, because for, for whatever reason, either your coach is making you do it, but for whatever reason, you want to be up here, but she's keeping you from being up here because you're getting locked. So I don't change my positioning if this is where I want to be. I try different shots. Does it mean I'm going to be successful? Maybe, maybe not. But I want to try different directional ones, spin, speeds, trajectories, all those. I bet I could figure something out. If this is where we want to be, you and I play much better when we're up here, I bet I could go through the process of figuring something out that where you don't like it, Lisa. It could be a drop shot, right, a different shot selection. It could be a high ball to your backhand. You're, you're, the one down here you love, but these up here you hate. It, maybe she's a two-handed backhand player, so I slice it low. There's going to be something that's still going to allow us to stay up here. But your, your teams will almost always default to position. I, I'm going to stay back and cover. Well, yeah, your hour and a half match now is three and a half. Right? So now I want you to serve and come in. So she's attacking. How do we want her to... Good. Very good. At due side, same thing. Remember what we talked about, it's time. You're not dealing with distance. So what I want you to do is I want you to serve in volley. And when, let's do the deuce side again. And when uh, Elizabeth gets ready to hit it, no matter where you are, I want you to split. So we're dealing with time again, not distance. She's not trying to get to a certain spot because everything's different. What are the variables? How hard does Lisa hit? What is the trajectory? Where does she aim? Where does Elizabeth want to hit? How hard she hit? There's too many variables for you to say you're going to go from point A to point B. It just depends. It depends on what you do. Go split. Good. I bet you run fast. Go again. Good. And you split and then you spring. Right? Don't stay. Do it again. Same thing. And I've seen you run, Lisa. You can run faster than that. I know. I have under been. control. A little bit quicker. Go. Split. Good. Very good. See ya. Oh, okay, what was the problem with the lob? What's that? What'd you say? I was too slow. Too slow. Maybe. I can give you track shoes. Where did you hit the ball? Right at him. Right at him. Did you put him in trouble? So could we change the shot selection? Would you have to be faster? If I changed it, probably not. Probably not. Would you have to be uh, taller, like me? <laughs> so a lot of the stuff that we worry about as players kind of go out the window because we've got them thinking of something different. If you put this person in trouble, what you're trying to think about really goes away. Right? So do it again. How balanced was she was with the first ball? Extremely. You hit the best volley of the day. So, and we'll do um, only six matches. But in those six matches, four of those matches were to players who served and volleyed more than 75% of the time. Okay? Federer three times, Karlovich one time. But the other two matches that he lost to Varinka at the French Open finals and to Murray in the finals of Montreal, Varinka and Murray systematically had to change their game 
to compete with Djokovic. And guess what they did? They ended up coming to the net, serving volley a lot more than they ever have before. Okay, so serving volley works against all levels of players, especially someone like Djokovic was having fits. If those of you that were up this morning at 4 a.m. like I was to watch the Djokovic match against Misha Zverev, okay, Zverev is 110 in the world. He's kind of on the back nine of his career, but he was serving volleying, he was slicing, Djokovic was having fits. Now Djokovic fortunately got by because Djokovic is probably a more talented player, obviously, but it shows you the type of effect that it can have on even the best players in the world. So when we learn about certain volley and we start teaching certain volley, like I said, when you teach kids, it's all about experimentation. You want them to have fun, you want them to be positive, and you want them to be the most crazy, most creative they can possibly be. Have fun games up and net, all that stuff. Just embrace that. Have them hit against the wall, have them hit the ball as hard as they can against the wall, how close they can get. It's awesome, I'm telling you. They will love it. When you're teaching adults, when you're teaching male members, ladies team members, it's very important that you get the repetition down. Why? Because repetition builds confidence, right? That's what we're looking for. If you say, okay, I want you to come in and volley off this, and okay, they come in, they volley, they miss it, they're never gonna volley again for the next month, okay? You just gotta keep hammering it home. It's that repetition. When you get to the higher level players, it's just gonna come down to execution and understanding of the game, okay? If they can execute it, it's gonna be solid. All right, and like I said, when they start having success in competition with it, that's when they're completely hooked, all right? Some fundamental differences, and by the way, also another thing, 2015, Novak Djokovic, he won the US Open in 2015. His toughest match was against a certain volleyer. Sorry, Roger fans, it wasn't Federer, it was Feliciano Lopez. He beat him 7-6 in the fourth set. See, I have this photographic memory, thank goodness for that, right? But, so, it's one of those things where, again, you know, serve and volley does work, but we just don't teach enough. And I find that so funny because a big demographic in this country is what? Baby boomers. They grew up in the boom of tennis. They were watching McEnroe. I guarantee you everyone wanted to play like McEnroe. Most people can't because he's amazing, but everyone wanted to play like McEnroe. So they grew up in that. They would love to get back to that. They would love to serve and volley, okay? Then you have the next, the next generation. You have the juniors, okay? And the juniors like it too. Why? Well, because you know what? If you're training a player today, and this kind of goes into my player development, which I have in the outline, but if you're training a player today to play like the top players, when they get to that level, they're going to be a generation behind because they're not going to be playing like those top players, all right? So it's one of those issues where those juniors, are we going to have a player like Novak Djokovic 10, 15 years from now? the game's going to change. The game changes every six months. So we got to start thinking about ways that they can play that's a little bit different than today. And that's really what it's going to take. So a couple of fundamental differences with certain volley, okay? Baseline play, it's a lot like, of course, Todd mentions food, so I, I always go back to food. Okay, baseline play, it's, it's, a lot like, it's a lot like a chicken, right? Laying it, it's all in a day's work. You can stay back there on the baseline, there's no pressure, go all day, and you'll go back and you'll play the next point the same way, and you'll play the next point the same way, and you'll play the next point the same way, okay? And you can change it up a little bit, but you know, it gives you a little bit of margin, it gives you a little bit of flexibility. Certain volley's not like that. You have to have a full commitment. So if baseline play, if, if you're a chicken, and you're laying an egg, it's all in a day's work for the chicken, certain volley, it's like a pig and you're bacon. It's a lifelong commitment for the pig, okay? That's really the way it is. Because when you serve and volley, you have to have that full commitment. But the big fundamental difference with serve and volley that you will start to see is that it's pressure, right? It's pressure. You're putting pressure on your opponent, and you might even feel a little bit of pressure yourself. And that's okay for those that, that, that do like pressure. I love pressure. Put me in any situation, I absolutely love. Put me in the cockpit of an F-18 fighter, Put me, put me in an in a operating room doing brain surgery. I don't care. Come up with it. I'm going to love it, and I will find a way. But, and that's kind of how you want to see your students. If you, if you have a student that really enjoys that pressure, and they feel it, you know, Billie Jean King has a great, great uh, quote on pressure, right? Pressure is a privilege. It comes to those who earn it. I'm sure all you guys have heard that. Well, that's true, but for a lot of people and a lot of tennis players, pressure paralyzes. 
So if you can put pressure on them, it's pretty good. And I'll talk more about that a little bit later. I got my students here. Let's go ahead. Suzanne, why don't you come on up first? Come on up. Now, one of the issues I see, and I see this, I don't think it's, it's, a, it's a coaching problem in the States. It, this is like a coaching problem everywhere that we do. So come on up, even close. I'm not going to bite, I promise. All right. We're, we're going to do some volleys. So this is like the basic lesson I see. And I've seen this, this same thing happen in the States. I've seen it happen in Switzerland, in Sweden, in Spain, in France, in Italy, in Egypt. I see it everywhere. And I don't know how we got to this point, but it's really detrimental towards the serve and volley. Here's why. All right. Suzanne, we've been working on volleys for a while, right? And we're doing awesome. So let's just come on up, and we're going to just keep working on these volleys. Okay, keep, get close. That's fine. Yeah. You're going to love volleys, right? Yeah. Right, here's what I want you to do. See this volley? Just go ahead and hit it. Put this ball away. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, that's it. Yes. Excellent. Keep going. Get closer. Get closer. Keep coming up. Keep coming up. Do something with it. That's okay. Do something. Yes, put that ball away. you got to hit this winner. you got to put that ball away. Go for it. Okay? So what was the problem there? It's not realistic. Well, too fast, but also... Did you really move? Did you do anything? Yeah. You just stood up there, right? No, mo most players nowadays, when they get that close to the net, it's probably just because they're shaking hands after the match. But <laughs> what ends up happening is we create that false comfort level with the player, right? Because the vast majority of the time, they're not going to hit number one that many volleys from that close. If you're, if you're hitting that many volleys that close in that short amount of time, there's something seriously wrong with that point. But also, look how close she was, right? So what's going to happen is she's going to be perfect at that volley, but she might not ever get a volley like that in a match. So let's go ahead and move back a little bit. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Right there. Stop. Okay. So now what's going to happen is if she serves, or let's say not even serving, let's say it's transitional, right? She gets a good ball. She thinks it's good anyways, okay? Suzanne, start coming up. Go ahead, hit this ball. Go, go. Okay, so that's pretty good, but that's the more likely the ball that she's going to get, okay? Can you guys name me anyone that can go from the baseline to this close to the neck and hit the first volley? Not really, I can't. If you guys can, you're, you're a better player than me, okay? But the pace of their shot, and that's the thing about hitting the ball hard, is the pace of their shot, they're gonna have even less time. So Suzanne, keep coming up. Okay. So what's going to end up happening is we get in this mentality of we're teaching them to be able to put that ball away. And we're putting so much pressure on them and everything else. But at the end of the day, one thing we're not teaching them is calmness, right? You see how active I was? Uh, hit this ball, hit this ball, it better be a winner. Better be. But what ends up happening is that then when they play the point and they get to that close level of the net, they choke. <laughs> they choke because they know the ball is going to have to be put away within one or two shots. So there has to be a calming effect. They have to realize that they have to trust their technique and they have to trust the volley. And don't so much worry about putting the ball away in one or two shots. But what ends up happening is there's that calmness effect that goes on when you do it right. When you can put them in a position like that where they are uncomfortable and they can hit volleys from that position, now you're going to have a player. Now you're going to have someone that knows how to volley, right? What you're trying to do with certain volleys, you're trying to teach your student to get comfortable feeling uncomfortable, right? And that's hard for a lot of people. Yes, get comfortable feeling uncomfortable. Because, come on up, Suzanne. Everyone likes it up here, right? I mean, her family's watching, they're giving her eyes. They think she's the best volleyer in the whole world. Oh my goodness, look at you. You should be for the Australian Open. You should be going down there. You should be training. She hasn't missed any, She hasn't missed one volley. She hasn't missed one single volley. But she'll never get that in a match, right? Never. Instead, the ball she's going to get, move on back for me, the ball she's going to get is right around there. And maybe even further, Pete Sampras, you know, would hit his serve. He would take most of his first volleys from there. It was almost like he, he, he wanted to, OK? That's not the best place to take a volley, but guess what? That's a place that you're going to have to take a volley, OK? So that's something to, to, to get used to right there. Now, thank you very much for that. Okay. Now, one of the things, too, is the serve, right? It undermines, the power serve undermines the whole serve and volley game. Why? Because, again, the harder we hit the ball, 
the faster it comes back. One of the issues with being a person my size is everyone assumes you have a big serve. And maybe I do, maybe I don't. But the first question to anyone, to a junior, to an adult, when they see you and it looks like you might have a good serve, their first question is what? What's the fastest you've served, right? That's, they always ask that. And it's always bothered me because I've hit a lot of fast serves in my life that have come back and I've lost the point, right? But if I place the serve well and I place it when I'm smart about it, now all of a sudden that ends up working to my advantage, okay? If you look at some of the best serving volleyers ever, uh, let's say Edberg, let's say Rafter, let's say Navratilova, right? Didn't have the biggest serves, but that was okay. They, they, they still seem to do pretty well, and I'm sure any of us would take their careers. 